video today i'm going to be breaking down this morphing effect and after effects so let's just hop right into this so you guys can use this effect in lots of different ways you guys don't have to use a sphere like i did i'll show some examples on the screen from edits that i made back in the day where i was transforming like guns and stuff into other things and then you could use this as like a transition there's going to be a set core of like four or five effects in this that are going to be like the most important so in my example i'm going to be using element 3d but like i said you don't have to use this so we're going to start off by right clicking going to new and creating a solid layer click ok and then using effects console i'll add on elements and we'll just go to scene setup and import a sphere so i'll just click on import and click on this little wooden sphere right here click open then i'll click use auto normals and normalize the size then i'll just go over to presets go to physical and click on chrome double click on that and that's how i got that chrome look and just click ok and say i want to match this sphere to the environment of this picture of osama san what i want to do is i'll just go ahead and name this layer layer and and then I'll go to my custom layers, go to custom texture maps and set the layer to the correct layer. And then now when you go into your scene setup and you go to your scene materials, click on Chrome, you can now change the environment to the texture of that background, click OK. And then as you see here, that's going to make it reflective off of that background. So that's how I did it in the original clip. So now I'm going to bring in a little model of the earth. And then we're going to morph from this right here into the earth. So I'll just come down here, repeat the process, go to new, solid, OK. And then using effects console, add on element to that layer. Go to scene setup and then just import that earth model. Click open, use auto normals, normalize size. And there we go. We already have everything on there. And you guys can get really similar models models from Sketchfab, Turbo Squid, or CG Trader. Yes, yeah, so I'll just transform from this into that. So, and so the key right here is getting the motion right. So I'm gonna move it over from here over to here. So I'll just set my keyframes boom just like that so it's going to move from here to there and then essentially what i'll do is i'll just copy that same transform to the earth layer so it's going to be moving in the exact same way and so now what you really just want to do is fade it in so you're just going to click t on your keyboard bring up the opacity and you can fade in the opacity so i'll set a keyframe at zero right there and then go forward a few frames set that to 100 what we can do is highlight our keyframes easy ease them with f9 or right click go to keyframe assistant and click easy ease and then we'll just highlight those keyframes and open up the graph editor and i like to edit in the speed graph instead of the value graph so if you want to change that just come right down here and then we can move these bars over to get something a little bit smoother and so we got something like that and then i'll just copy those keyframes and paste them to the earth layer that way it mimics perfectly and then so at its peak speed i like to do the transition so we'll say like right around here we can start fading it in i'll bring the opacity up to 100 so we have a smooth transition like that and then we just want to fade the bottom layer out so bring up the opacity at 100 and then bring it down to zero right about there and so this is a solid foundation right here this is exactly what we want and now we can start tweaking it and adding in some details so so in my earth layer what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up the effects panel open up the element panel go down to group one open open up particle replicator and then we can start keyframing in some rotation right here so that when it comes over and reveals to the right it's going to be spinning and so i just had to go through one negative rotation right there then i'll just highlight those easy ease them and then i like to create a graph that looks like this so it speeds up at the beginning and slows down so we have something that looks like that and now finally i'm just going to pre-comp these two layers together so the chrome ball layer and the earth layer together and then right at the peak of the transformation we're going to start off by adding on our effects so i'll add on turbulent displace first and then i'll keyframe the amount and size at the peak of the transformation and then if you click on that layer and click u on your keyboard that's going to bring up the used keyframes u for used and then on either end i'm just going to bring the amount to zero like this right here go ahead and easy ease those keyframes as well and then what we're going to do is we're going to make a graph that looks like this so i'm going to highlight this right there bring that over bring that over bring this over so we have something that looks like that. And then the keyframe that's on the right, I like to drag out a bit and then drag this one closer. And now at the peak of the transformation, we're just going to adjust these values to get something that looks a little bit crazier. So we can decrease the size just a bit below 100 and then increase the amount to get a blob that looks like that. And there we go. That's the start of the morph. 
And now the next thing that I'm gonna do is add on Sapphire Distort. Now, if you guys don't have Sapphire Distort, there's lots of other effects that you can use. For example, CC Blobalize, which is built into After Effects. And so right when you drag it on, it'll look like this because the amount is on one. Um, but if you just adjust that, you can get some crazy looks. Really the key here is amount and blur lens. So I'll keyframe amount at the peak and then on either end, we'll just bring that down to zero. And so I'll set the amount usually to something like 0 0.4 and then increase the blur lens so that it's kind of a large blob and then i'll bring it back down to zero on either end and then copy the same graph that we did for turbulent and displays so again i'll just highlight those easy ease them with f9 open up my graph editor and then recreate that same exact graph and then we're just going to adjust these until it looks good and now we have something that looks like that and now finally my favorite effect that i think just makes this effect look way better is adding on some displacer pro this is a free plugin definitely recommend and getting it and real quick go fondle that subscribe button and caress the like button they appreciate it and make sure to check out my website where i sell a bunch of digital assets for you guys that are super useful so with displacer pro i'm just gonna set the translate x value to do something crazy and because it's going from left to right because that's the direction that it's going in and then again on either end we're just gonna bring the translate x to zero just like this and we can bring up the transform drop down, highlight those keyframes, copy the same graph. Uh, but for this one, I'm actually not gonna copy the graph. And then actually I'm gonna try pushing it over to the left, see what that looks like. And then just dragging out these keyframes, making them look good. And then now something that I think I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna highlight all of these and just drag them over slightly and there we go that's looking way smoother right there just like that and now finally the final effect that i'm going to add on is distort chroma and with this one i like to increase it somewhere around halfway so like 0.5 and then just blast up the blur lens again and then on either end bring it back down to zero and i just brought it down to 0.2 just to make it as subtle as possible and the cool thing about this effect is that it looks different every single time that you do it so you can make this as a preset and reuse it but honestly i like to just repeat this process every time because i can get some really different looks every single time and as long as you have turbulent displace and displacer pro you can pretty much use this effect on anything like you don't need to use all the effects that i'm using i'm just using these because i think they're the coolest ones and another effect that i did in this video is this invisibility effect where the sphere disappears for a second and then goes back to normal if you guys want a full breakdown on how to do that effect i'll leave that up on either end up here um, i did a full video breaking down how to create those invisibility effects in multiple different ways utilizing after effects and photoshop that's a really cool video go check out my website at jamovieffects.com it really helps out the channel and i appreciate you guys have a great rest of your day peace